because you're talking about two different types of hostages in your book. To tell you, I've read it. In your book, I've read it overnight to try to figure out who is this guy, okay? And I would like you to share that with the audience, the different kinds of hostages, okay? Explain it to them. Uh, and then what can somebody who finds himself either with himself hostage or facing a situation where somebody they know is uh, uh, in a hostage situation, not the terrorist type, but the second type, how can they work their way out of it? I hope my question is clear, but sometimes I get convoluted. Did you understand me? The question is on the screen. Okay, you bet. Um, I would first like to comment on, yeah, I, I would first like to comment on the scenario that you just gave us about the um, the speaker that you had and the conflict that arose in that situation where he had promised you um, to to be somewhere, uh, to be on your event, and then two days before the event, he decides that he's not going to because of his ego and something that happened to him. Um, as a negotiator, we have to, yeah, as a negotiator, one of the things that we have to realize is that there are certain things that are within our control and certain things that are not within our control. If something like that happens um, at the at the end of a deal, that a deal is broken, as negotiators, all we can pretty much do is remind the person to be the best version of themselves, to say, you know, I understand that you had a conflict with, with X in that room, but I want to also remind you that this is very important for me and, and for you and that we reached an agreement. I'm asking you to be the best version of yourself and to follow through on your Let's Forget about what happened in that room because that is not part of my event. And uh, what I want to do is I want to focus on you when you're in that event. And I'm asking you to be the best version, bring yourself forward because I know you, I like you and I've trusted you. And you made an agreement with me that I've really counted on. And so I'm asking you to step up and to leave your personal feelings about this individual behind and just to focus on the goodness that we're going to bring to the event. That, that is one of the many ways in which we can approach a conflict. Conflict is not always bad. It sometimes creates opportunities for us to get even closer to the person that we're in conflict with because we get to hear them speak to me, let me know. So that's just, I just wanted to throw that in because that's a negotiation and we can't let yes. our personal, yes, and we can't let our personal ego, we can't respond with anger. Um, the, the, the idea, we don't want, we don't want to react. We want to respond. Viktor Frankl said that between stimulus and response, there is a moment. And in that moment, we get to choose our response. And in that response, we get to choose our destiny, which is very true. Because when we take a moment just to think, okay, now I don't want to get angry. This is not going to help the situation. I'm going to take a deep breath. And how am I going to proceed? Well, I'm going to put myself in the person's shoes. They're upset. And I'm going to acknowledge that they are upset. But then I'm going to remind them that this is between you and I, and then I'm going to take it from there. OK, so let's get to how can anyone holding him or herself hostage negotiate their way out of a hostage crisis? Well, here is the thing. One of the very most important things about negotiating your way out of being a hostage to yourself to to think those negative things is to become aware of it. To the awareness, because sometimes we might feel this tightness in our chest. We might feel very uneasy and we're not, we just feel down and, and we feel blue and we're not quite certain what it is. We have to check in with ourselves. We have to think to ourselves, what am I saying? What am I thinking? Oh, I know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I'm not good enough. I'm thinking that I can't possibly get this, this job that I'm after or this date that I'm after or this relationship or this sale, whatever, I just gotta change that focus. So become aware of that narrative. It's so very important to check in with yourself and to say, what am I thinking of right now? Because we cannot think two thoughts at the same time. For example, if I were to tell you, hey, there's a big pink elephant in this room. Well, the moment you think pink elephant, you can't have two thoughts. You can't think pink elephant and blue elephant at the very same moment. 
You can think of it one after the other, but not at the same moment. And this is how our dominant thoughts really control our narrative. So if we're thinking, I can't do this, we are hostage because we're already sending a message to our subconscious mind that we can't do this. I want you to imagine the conscious mind and the unconscious mind in the following way. The conscious mind would be like the captain of the ship. Now we've all seen those movies where a ship is going through the waters and the captain shouts out to his crew or her crew, veer to the left, we're going to the left. And the crew says, aye aye captain. And they go and they do everything they possibly can to get the ship moving to the left. It is the very same idea when our conscious mind is speaking to the unconscious mind. The conscious mind is the captain of the ship. So if the captain of the ship says, I can't do this, the unconscious mind says, whoa, aye, aye, captain. The captain says we can't do this and they will do everything they possibly can to self-sabotage you. Now the word sabotage, when you take a look at that, what does the word sabotage mean? Sabotage means to damage, destroy or obstruct something. That's the word sabotage. So you hear news in which something was sabotaged, you think explosions, you think damage, you think lots of lots of terrible things. And it's usually political, it's usually motivated in some way, business, whatever, but it's it's someone who did a deliberate act to damage, destroy or obstruct something. That's sabotage. Now when you put the word self in front of that, what are you doing? You're damaging, destroying, or obstructing yourself by the thoughts that you entertain. That's not what we want to do. We want to change the narrative by becoming aware of the narrative. One of the ways in which I really encourage people to take control of their self-sabotage is to start their day off with intention. And what I mean by that, Dr. Ope, and to everyone listening, we have control over our lives and our thoughts. It is a choice, and I love that word, that six-letter word, choice. We get to choose how we respond. We get to choose what we feel. We get to choose our happiness. Nobody gives us happiness. It's not like somebody comes up and says, here's a box of happiness. Open it. And you're thinking, I don't feel like being happy. I don't want to open this box. Why are you giving me? It's a choice. Do I want to open the box of happiness that I have within me? That's a choice. You go somewhere, you're on a picnic, and some people are having a great time. And some people might be saying, I hate picnics. I hate picnics. We're all individuals. Somebody may have, be having a terrible time in that because they've chosen not to feel happiness. It's a choice. So starting our day off with intention means when you wake up, start your day off with gratitude. Take 30 seconds. Hey, I'm alive. A lot of people didn't make it through the night and I pray for them, uh, but I'm here. Thank you. I've got my health and I've got a roof over my head. I am so grateful. I've got a person in my life that I truly love. I've got children. I've got a wife. I've got a, a husband. I've got a job. I am grateful. I am grateful. And if you don't have these things, find something that you are grateful for, but start your day off with gratitude. That sets a mindset. The next thing is you walk into the closet of your mind. We take so much time to dress and to look good for the world, right? We want to clothe our exterior body. But what people don't do is they don't clothe their inter interior selves. They don't walk into the closet of their minds and pick out an attitude for the day. Imagine your mind as being two closets and a hallway. And on, in the one closet, you have all these dark things. You have sadness, regret, disappointment, loss. We all have that. We want to keep that closet locked. We don't want to peek into that closet. It's a dark place. On the other side of the of the corridor is this beautiful closet. It's filled with love. It's filled with gratitude. It's filled with faith and hope. We want to open that door and say, yes, I'm going to wear faith today. I'm going to wear love today. I'm going to wear empowerment today. I am amazing. I am fantastic. You start to say these mantras and you start to believe them. Don't just say them because here's the difference. If I go and I say, I'm amazing. I'm great. I'm uh, I'm really going to have a fantastic day. <laughs> if I say that, how much do you think I'm going to believe it, right? 
<laughs> but if I say, I'm amazing, I'm fantastic, I'm going to have a great day. If I bring that energy out and I really truly believe it, it is like believing the opposite of paranoia. Paranoia is the belief that the world is conspiring against you. The opposite is pronoia, belief that the world is conspiring for you. And bring, bring wait, wait, your what is, did you say pronoia? What is that? I've never heard of that word before. Pronoia. It is the opposite. Yes. Uh, well, a very good friend of mine, Glenn Morshower, who is an actor, uh, he's an American actor and he's on Clubhouse quite a bit. He brought this word uh, to a clubhouse room um, and started to talk about it. It is the opposite of its brother, paranoia. Paranoia is a belief that the world is conspiring against you. Pro-noia is the belief that the world is conspiring for you. And remember I talked about we are all energy? The moment we start to believe that the world is conspiring for us, guess what? It starts to conspire for us because we bring that energy out. And people see this high value energy in us and they say, yes, I'm attracted to that. And the universe says, you believe I'm going to give you good things. So it gives you good things. That is how we should respond to life. So how can we how can we get ourselves out of this state of of, of being a hostage? Be aware of what you're feeling. And then once you're aware that you're saying negative things to yourself, change the narrative, change the narrative change your physiology start to move around start to say okay i've got this i've got this go out for a walk start to listen to some tunes that you really like start to run and jump and maybe even dance right where you are change the physiology change the narrative when you start to do these things you change your your whole aura your whole energy changes but you have to believe it and you have to keep doing it it's like a muscle if you don't want to exercise a muscle, it doesn't get stronger. So exercise that muscle. That's how I would Wow. Wow, guys. I hope you guys are making notes. This man is dropping it for me to keep quiet and just let him just talk. You know, he's dropping some serious gems here. Now he's talking about if you are not making notes, I'm making notes. Start your day with intention. And he's so right. Many times when I start my day without being intentional of what I want to do that day, he ends up getting... Be, uh, becoming a messed up day. I, I teach my students that that I saw that from my wife who claimed that she learned it from me, even though I myself don't remember. She said in one of your trainings many years ago, like 2003, 2004, you said something that plan your day in advance. What do you want to be to happen tomorrow? Think about it. Put it in your mind before you go to bed so that when you wake up in the morning, if I write it down, so that you know what you want to accomplish during the day. My wife is the most uh, 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 I say efficient woman being I know in terms of getting things done. And she has only one secret. She doesn't do uh, all this mental stuff. She doesn't go to any uh, place to go learn. She does only one thing. Before she goes to bed at night, she takes a piece of paper. She has this jotter that she tears out. She writes exactly what she wants to happen tomorrow in order six, seven things that she wants to achieve tomorrow. Either um, uh, 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 kiss my husband or go to the market or whatever. Everything that she wants a day to be the next day, she writes it down before she goes to bed. And then she wakes up executing it like a maniac. She doesn't do anything that is not in that thing. It has to be an emergency for her to even think about it. And I realized that sometimes before midday, she has accomplished what I'm not accomplishing in 16 hours going up and down because she was intentional. And it's very difficult to take her off her game. She decides a, a day before she gets up. Many times I just wake up and I take the day as it goes. Maybe if I'm unlucky, I open my WhatsApp and I have somebody there complaining about uh, some political figure or about uh, Nigeria and that sets the tone of my day because I wasn't intentional on what I want to do. So if you guys are listening, that's a very powerful nugget that uh, Paul just, just shared. Another one is shared that I love. So it's a good it's a good image. He said, walk into the closet of your mind and pick out an attitude for it. Now I have to be imagining that, okay, I have different clothes, different attitudes in my wardrobe. The same way I go put on a jacket, I need to put on an attitude for the day that is so massive. 
massive. Ma I've never had it said like that. Thank you so much for because that that imagery, I can see staying with me for a long time. When I woke up now, and I, because I have a working closet, right? So as I'm working in there now, I have to put aside for the attitude of the day. As I, okay, what do you want to do? To, do you want to be a happy man? Do you want to be a man that is uh, going to let uh, yesterday's problem? So guys, I'm recapping him in a very extensive way because these are the nuggets. This is why this man was here to help us. We are not uh, on the war front. Most of us listen to this. We don't have drug issues, but we are hostages because we don't even know that we are. Number three thing he said that I like. He said, be aware of your situation. Ignorance is what is making you perpetuate sadness. Is what is making you perpetuate hopelessness. If you are aware that you have a problem, then it is easy to find that solution. I love that. Because many of us go through life without being aware. Okay? We are not aware. So thank you so much for that. And of course, it says, change the narrative. Powerful, powerful stuff. Now, these are some of the stuff, by the way, in his book. Okay? But him saying it out loud to my hearing now is a whole different game. Because I got the book on Audible. Let me give you guys a place to get it. A Paul's book, Take Control of Your Life, is available on Audible. That's where I got it. I know it's available on Amazon. And it's also available on his website. If you go there, you are going to get uh, uh, more uh, direction as to, uh, 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 as to how to get that. Guys, go there and check it out. J. P. J. Paul Nadu. By the way, am I calling that right? Is it it's Nado. It's Nado. You're very close. Nado. Okay. Nado. Okay. Like Nedu. Because yeah. I, it reminds me of my partner, my managing partner. His name is Nedu. Okay. <laughs> J. Paul Nado. Guys, yeah. you want to go check that out? Get that book because I'm a very big believer in mindset. Mindset dictates everything else. You might be technically sound, you might be knowledgeable. If your mind is messed up, if you're an hostage to yourself, you're not going nowhere. So thank you.